seven o'clock on uh, Monday, December 5th, and I'll plan, call to order the uh, meeting of the planning board. And I've asked Denise to, or no, to uh, Kathy Sylvester is going to read the uh, introduction. Kathy? Sure. Mm -hmm. Location is remote on Zoom. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access. And we're required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extend the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGLC 30A and 20 until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connection noted below. Do you want me to read all these numbers? Well, I think the remote meeting connection is noted on the Deerfield website. On the website. Okay. With all the passwords. Um, meeting attendees should mute phones unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Thank you, Kathy. Right. All right. So I've called the meeting to order and remind um, all folks, public and of the board that our meeting guidelines are to speak one at a time, following our dear to field code of conduct, to be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non-repetitive, and recognized by the chair, which often is a little bit easier, I think, on Zoom than sometimes when we're looking all around. Uh, board members in attendance. Uh, go around what I see on the screen. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester present. Denise Mason. Denise Mason present. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine present. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord present. Andrea's iPad, Andrea Liebson. Hi, Andrea's here. And Kathy Wotroba. Kathy Wotroba here. Thank you, and Emily will put present. So we have a full, full house and uh, definitely a quorum. Um, Rachel, would you like to go forward with presenting the minutes? Oh, I present the minutes. Well, I, you know, uh, can we have a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of uh, October 3rd? They're very succinct. They're very... For me, for me they're practically spark notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think, I think from that standpoint, actually, the Attorney General requests that the minutes are um, detailed enough so that... Uh, someone who did not attend the meeting could understand what what happened, and I think that does in fact mean summary, not word by word. And um, you know, motions are noted and all that, so they're they're very fine. Any second to approve the minutes of October second or third, and that's Andrew Liebson um, seconding that. Any discussion? Did I first them? You did, I believe. Oh. Didn't you? Uh, so, uh, roll call vote. Kathy Sylvester? Uh, abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Uh, Denise Mason? Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord? Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea? Leaps Andrea, in. yes. Andrea Oops, unmute. There we go. And that was a yes, I think. Kathy <laughs> Wichoba, yes. yes. Okay, and could we have a motion to approve the minutes of um, November 14th, 2022? I so move. This is Andrea. Rachel Blaine, I second. Any discussion? All righty. Uh, so, Kathy Sylvester. Uh, aye. Louise Mason? Yes. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord? Emily Gaylord, yes. Uh, Andrea Leibson? Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Wichoba. Kathy yes. And the local, yes, so they pass unanimously. All right, so old business, we have our- I'm, I'm sorry, Annalee, I, I'm sorry. I just need to interrupt for a moment. I'm just realizing now, we had from the last meeting, we had um, the statement of um, acknowledging the as-built plans from the Sugarloaf condos, and Mark is here- um, and that seems to have disappeared off of this agenda. And I think we were just going to read a statement acknowledging 
Uh, Mark, you can help me out here acknowledging uh, that the plans are received and uh, the as built. Have oh, right. I thought, I thought uh, it was communicated that, in fact, um, they had just been submitted and we had voted on them at the 11th meeting. Okay. Okay. Is that done? Is that, uh, Mark, were you here for a different reason? Uh, can you folks hear me okay? Yes. Great. <laughs> uh, good evening. The, uh, the plans that you looked at, the as-built plan, was our draft plan. This is the final plan that we submitted after that. It's gone to the building inspector, the DPW, and the water department to make sure all the departments who deal with that on a daily basis have copies. The difference, which I think was asked in one of the uh, emails as to what the difference is between the draft and between this one, is that uh, the DPW asked us to do some vertical survey work as well as horizontal. Very unusual to be asked. Uh, my engineer tells me um, something he hasn't run into before. Uh, it was expensive, but we were happy to do it. This gives the uh, depth of the catch basins, things of that fashion to the DPW. So they have that for the records in the future. Uh, while we were out there, we also did the dry utilities, which means the cable, telephone, electric lines. So there are um, survey points on those as well going forward. My attorneys um, spoke with my engineer. Uh, neither could be here tonight, but my attorney spoke with the engineer and said that there is some wording that they've used in the past, SVE engineering. Um, and we just want to make sure we're putting this to rest, that we're all on the same page, that it's been done, the town has approved it, and we've met our requirements, the permits. So I gave Amy a copy of the suggested wording that you guys can obviously uh, mull around and decide if that works for you or not. Um, and I'll read it to you and then you can decide if it's something you want to use or if you want to throw it away or if you don't want to vote at all. Uh, but we would like to make sure that the final plan has been acknowledged by the board and that we are showing that we've met the requirements of the permits. So the, the short one- If sentence, I can interrupt you for a moment, Mr. White. Sure. Um, uh, I actually, you can't. Um, you have to recuse yourself, I believe, because you're a neighbor. I don't want you to get in trouble. Denise. In that case, I don't know. I have not seen that. Amy, did you send that out to I, us? I believe I did send it back when um, I, I apologize because it no. didn't so, appear off okay, the Okay, so Amy, since we have not received it, does it make, how can we vote on something we haven't seen? No, I, I, I did we, send it. I sent it uh, quite a while back. We gave it to the planning board quite some time ago. At the same time, we gave it to the uh, building inspector, the uh, and the other departments I mentioned, I think it was, uh, oh, Amy, you'd have to remind me, but I think it's a, a November 2nd was when it was yeah, sent in. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. And I, I apologize for not putting it in this meeting packet. This, um, that is a mistake. It's, and I have to, uh, <laughs> I have to make the comment that I can't read it. <laughs> I don't, you know, it is, it, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of points that are uh, demarked on this plan to show that it's been done correctly. So the surveyor, uh, excuse me, the engineer of record is the one that has to approve it. And he approves it by stamping and signing the plan saying it's been done to specifications and requirements. And then the plan is given for review to the water department, the DPW and the board of, or the building inspector who have had it for well over a month as well. No responses for any of them from any of them after the draft plan was given to you folks. That's when as I understand, that's when uh, the DPW asked for the verticals. And that's the reason we uh, added to the existing plan to um, try and make it more comprehensive. Um, and that's why I'm here tonight is that I didn't realize that uh, the people of the board haven't seen it, though I don't know if anybody can read it, to be honest with you, it's quite complex. So as I understand the, the rules behind this, because Tony Wanseski, who is the engineer licensed by the state of Massachusetts has signed the plan stating that it meets the requirements uh, and the plan meets the survey requirements of the state of Massachusetts. Uh, that's what we're supposed to go by. So. Mark, I was gonna ask, I mean, I, I just looked and I don't see it and I typically save everything, but I was wondering- I'm, 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 I have it. You do? Um, well, uh, uh, November 3rd. Yeah. November 3rd, okay. From Amy. Rachel, can you review the minutes of that meeting to see if we in there fact voted to accept accept the um, as built plans as they were approved by the building inspector? Because that would be helpful. Yep. 
Thanks. Oh, I see. You may have already done this prior to me coming and asking to be in front of the board. I get you. Okay. Mark, it's hard to remember from one month to another <laughs> when we get no, things just... November 2nd and here it is like six <laughs> weeks later. If it's not on the agenda, it's not ringing a bell for me. I am completely in agreement. Yeah. Try, building, try building 70 condos in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> um, it's no. a really big file. It was sent by Amy on November 3rd, but, but she sent it to each of us individually because it bounced. And we didn't, we did not do it on November 3rd because mm -mm. we got it that same day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to find, because I know there was the wording I had also, I thought sent out the, the wording. Um, you you had on. Um, I just uh, can't find it. Well, is that the, um, the snowberry? uh circle wording. yes yes the representatives of snowberry circle may present the final as-built plans but i don't know if um hold on uh, this uh okay hold on sorry i don't seem to have that i don't know why one of the things that's asked is that we amend we fix the the um from courts right so we changed the names is that one of the yeah yes that was the problem that what you, you mm -hmm. guys and we didn't do that problems. we we did not change that so we could talk about that to now and move that along that part yeah. that was yeah to change the names in the minutes that you just approved i apologize I it's not in the minutes that way th amy though okay. because we okay. Didn't have okay okay thank you um Hmm. Well, okay. Is there is there anything that's being held up by the builder if we don't approve it tonight? There is not. Everything's complete. Uh, and it's a good, very good question. Thank you. But everything over there is complete. Uh, all seventy mm -hmm. units have been built and and purchased already. The road is complete. The beautiful streetlights I'm really proud of uh, have been installed. Uh, all systems are go. The storm water has been complete. Everything is done. Uh, we have the granite. Uh, markers in the ground showing where the turns and the rest are. The only thing this will hold up is that I, I really, um, I'm looking forward. It's been a long haul, as you can imagine. I'm looking forward to turning this over, the project over to the homeowners association and making the, actually I am the homeowners association, but turning the homeowners association over to the owners. So they can now um, elect who they'd like and, and or, or work with the appointments that I make. So that they now have this project uh, in their own hands. Um, that's the only thing that will hold up if we don't come to a conclusion tonight. And if you don't have the information, I don't think it's fair to ask you to go forward. Well, okay. I think we I, you know, Mark, I'm the only one. I don't seem to have it. I don't know why. Sometimes, like, did you have it, Andrea? Well, I think because it was sent individually. So, Denise, it's a possibility that it was sent. I had problems with it bouncing, and I did well, send it. Well, it, it probably bounced, order. Amy, because when I get anything from the planning board, I put it in my planning board file. So, it's yeah. not there. Okay. So how many how many others do not have that? I have the maps, but I don't have a report. And yeah, there's no, there is no report. The maps are the report. So it's just okay, good. Then I do yep. have that. Yes. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can, can someone it? want to forward that to me, please, Kathy? What whichever Kathy has it. Well, I think that it should come from Amy, probably. Just it should. The yeah. file is big, so like I think um, Amy might have to upload it somewhere and then send a link or something. I think that's part of why it's bouncing. It's such a big It, it is actually, it's up on the website. Oh, it, yeah. Well, well, you know, that's a little awkward. Okay, so how many people do have that? And if there's a quorum, can you vote on that? And I'll abstain. How's that? Annalie and I will abstain. You need four people, Emily, Rachel, Kathy, and Kathy. You all have it. You can vote oh, well, on Well, why it. don't we just, uh, if Mark's saying there's nothing that needs to happen right now, why don't we we've got a meeting in you know very short order first mm -hmm. of the year and we can do that um and then you can review it. it's not a big you know it's not a big ask and i think that we missed it on the last one so we can post it as a meeting an agenda item on the agenda that way it's kind of straight in through the front door and i think that that'll be important as well 
Well, that's not good, Rachel, because Mark, Mark, we we feel really uncomfortable voting on something that all of us have not really seen, able to discuss, and we do not want to get in trouble. And this has been a very <laughs> difficult process to begin with. So I think what we will do is hold off until the next meeting. It will be on the agenda. And if you don't mind coming back, and I believe that is January 9th, seven o'clock, more than likely at town hall. So that was my suggestion as well. We're on the same page. The problem is I won't be here. Um, I'll well, be, you know, I'm Paul going to rub, I'm going to rub it right now. I'm going to take a moment and say, I'll be in Mexico and I'm going to enjoy the hot weather. And then, yep, that's just well, where I'm going to be. You know, there, there is Wi-Fi in Mexico, Mark. Hey, Mark you know, you that's can, true. It's better than Deerfield. <laughs> you can zoom from Mexico. I've zoomed from Scotland. So dude, you can do it. I can barely zoom anyway, from my house. Well, we should be able to do it without you actually, that's I would right. imagine. Yes. Okay. I'm thinking that it's, it's, it's a housekeeping issue. Uh, Amy will give you the uh, wording, if I might, if I could just read you what we're suggesting for the wording, then you'll have that to, to think about over the next uh, you know few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very simple. This is what SBE has suggested because they've used it before. It says, we find the condominiums at Sugarloaf's infrastructure inclusive of stormwater has been constructed in substantial conformance to the plans and permits issued for this project by the Planning Board of Deerfield. Okay. Plain hey, no, Mark, you know, it would be really helpful if there's any language that you think is important that we should, you know, be privy to prior to the next meeting. Please send that to Amy. Amy will send that out to us. I did a month ago. Great. Okay, thank <laughs> yeah. you. Right. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Well, have a great time in Mexico and <laughs> we'll vote on this on the 9th. When we Very are good. Thanks <laughs> again. Um, okay, and thanks. Amy, if you if you could send me a link for the next meeting, that would be great because I will yep. try and yep. you know pry my stuff away from the beach and and take care of that. <laughs> okay. And I apologize <laughs> all involved. There's a lot going on, and sometimes things fall through the cracks. So I do apologize for that. Not a problem. Thanks for your time. Right. So Annalie, I'll move it back to you. It's your your show. <laughs> I, I just want to say I can't forward it, okay, because it's too large of a file. I just yeah. Oh so. well, well, yeah, I'll take. I'll put. I'll send everything out again tomorrow. I will be sure to include it on the agenda and in the meeting packet for the next all meeting. Right. All right. Thanks. Yeah. So it will all. It will come back to all of us, even those that have the file, so that we all have that same. Yeah. E yeah, yeah, I recommend looking at yeah, I'm I'm trying to remember how I sent the file, but yeah, if you don't get it, look on the website. The the file is very large and it's hard to send and it gets rejected sometimes. So, it is posted on the website. Thank you. Or if you just send us a link to the exact space place on the website cuz website yeah. is necessary. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I can uh, I can do I mean, yeah. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. I'm more than happy to yeah, do that. I started great. doing that and I forgot that, yes, I can do that. Okay. That would be better. Thank you. Sure. Okay. All right. And go for it, Annalie. Thank you. Well, and go for it, Kathy Sylvester. We um, are looking um, old business at our accessory apartment. Lila, so Kathy, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so Rachel and I have been working on this. Um, as you know, this started before I even started on the planning board. So um, I guess back in 2021. Um, so we've taken it to sub uh, a working group committee um, all before that. So yeah, I mean, I'm not even privy to what was going on, but I took, uh, Rachel and I took it over from the last draft, which was April of 2021 anyway. So um, we have, we formed a, subcommittee that um, had people from the Finance Committee, Zoning uh, Board of Appeals, uh, Bob Walden's on it. Um, there's a resident from town. Who am I forgetting, Rachel? Um, well, Chris. Chris is uh, Curtis as a consultant. Mm -hmm. um, and we met, I think, three Finance. times. CBA finance, yeah, finance, I said, I said finance and zoning, right? Oh, zoning, right? Yeah, and um, so we met three times. We have gone over this language many times. Uh, after which, Rachel and I consulted with Peggy Sloan from Percog. Uh, consulted again with Chris Curtis, 
um, Chief Pachorek regarding some parking issues, Bob Walden personally outside of the um, work group about some issues, uh, the Board of Assessors, we've talked to the DPW about the sewer impact of this um, proposed bylaw. And at this point, I think we're, we're done. Um, I went over it with Anna Lee today. There was a couple of minor changes, just language related that uh, we came up with just to go over it briefly. Um, in 3930 under special permit procedures, uh, Anna Lee thought it would be a good idea to to specify um, that the permit fee is a special permit fee, just so people aren't wondering if there's some other fee for accessory apartments. The fee would be for a special permit for whatever is being built. Um, and then we made a change to um, the very last piece of the bylaw where we talk about parking. Uh, says the following changes shall be made to the existing section 3100 townwide parking and loading requirements for dwellings, the additions, and we crossed out the words and deletions because we didn't make any deletions. So it would just read the additions shown below are the only changes. And then when you go below, we crossed out the first two lines, dwellings, two spaces per dwelling unit for single family, we crossed out two spaces per dwelling unit for multifamily plus a half a space per unit for visitors because there's no changes there. So the only change to the parking bylaw would be three spaces for single family with an accessory apartment. Um, so those are, if you, I don't know if you had a chance to review the bylaw I sent out. <laughs> Um, the latest iteration. Um, I think at this point we're ready to send it to Lisa to review um, and then have a public hearing. Public hearing. Thank you. Yes. So, any questions, comments, concerns about the bylaw at this point? Denise? I, you're on mute, I think. I was just going to say thank you so much for all the hard work that I read through both, you know, the truncated version, you know, the cliff note version and the full version. It looks really good. Oh, thank you. you. Know, I can't see how you could add, change anything else at this point. You do. Yeah. And I, I want to note that it looks like you simplified it for a while. Then it was 900 feet in percentage, et cetera. This yeah. looks uh, easier to uh, everybody to understand. So good job. More user friendly, hopefully. That yeah. That's the idea is that's what the state wants. Um, we remind you that if we had done the state language that they recommend, which is 900 feet or no more than half the existing structure, we could pass this with simple majority. But we felt, and the planning board felt at our last discussion about this, that half of the existing could be quite small if you had a 1,200 square foot house in the central district and you're putting on a 600 ADU, it's kind of not worth it. So we did add some language saying that in no case would the ADU be larger than the principal dwelling. Just so you know, there's some, you know, if you happen to have a principal dwelling that's less than 900 square feet, that you're not going to build a larger one than that. So, so can I ask, um, by avoiding the state language, do we uh, think that this will still pass easily with the state, or is, is this more of a gamble? The state won't disagree. It has to pass the town. Well, I shouldn't say they won't disagree. I mean, they might find something, but that what I mean is that that. If we want to pass it at town meeting by simple majority, we have to use the state language. Otherwise, we're required to have a two thirds vote to pass. So we're gambling on the two third vote to pass because um, we want it to be as user friendly as possible. And we can always, you know, change it if it doesn't pass or amend it at the meeting if people have concerns about it. 
Um, but we're kind of going for making it as accessible to everybody as possible. Denise? Hey, Kathy, for the, for the public hearing, I'm assuming it will be in person. Um, will you have handouts that will, so people can actually look at it? Because, you know, people can only absorb so much listening to it. It's really nice to see, see something. So I, th I would imagine, you know, I'm not, you know, real experienced at this, but if it's, we're having a public meeting, it'll be posted, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. the language. So, but I'll be happy to have copies printed out for people to have in front of them in case they yeah. don't have their own. I think that would be handy. Sure, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Annalie? And, and, and we'll make sure that uh, the meeting packet includes uh, it, so it's posted on the website, and you can do that. We, we, we might do some more too, because there were some details, um, things that public is concerned about, uh, school use, um, you know, the quantity, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? The Airbnb, you know, like we want, we might want to head off a few of those questions, um, have some, some of our facts in, in order before the meeting so that we're, we're ready for those questions. And that, that was what was great. And the, the Kathy did a great job of collating that. And we have some of those already. Mm -hmm. um, that was what was great about the subcommittee meeting. Yeah. Putting a lot of, fleshing a lot of those concerns out. Andrea? Um, based on what Rachel just said about the, uh, not having it be a short-term rental, which is 30 days. If we thought about longer than 30 days, you know, why yeah. are you, we did, but um, we did pass that by. I, I said, how about 60 days, you know? So, um, but um, Peggy Sloan had recommended 30 days. I guess that's kind of the typical language. So we just went with her expertise on it. And if I could add, she she is um, she's, has a clarity about this, that it is for increased housing inventory not necessarily simply for increased revenue of homeowners. Mm -hmm. So if you're really stacking up the goals, mm -hmm. uh, she felt that that would um, help enough because um, she, she has a clear uh, mission in terms of our understanding of our, our concern for creating more housing units. Yeah. You know, just getting back, Rachel, I think that was a really good point of what it isn't, you know, and, you know, every time I see a thing I visualize, and I'm sure Emily can see this, but um, I can see, you know, putting what it isn't and having a, a, a box where the red X, you know, next to the box saying, no, it's not this, no, it's not that, and this is what it is. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, another visual for people to see, no, it's not an Airbnb, no, so right. if you already have that information, that's great. So I have another question, which may be inappropriate at this point, but um, if people already have existing um, ADUs, are we grandfathering in some kind of acceptance of them? I mean, I just, I know we've talked about really good enforcement and, um, and what happens if people are already doing things like this. You know, I hadn't, that's a really good question. Plus we also want to find a fancier way to say grandfathered, of course. Yes. <laughs> so one of the trickiest things of all the, 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 you know, racially charged language that there is, that's one of the hardest uh, ones to get legacy. out. Pre legacy. legacy is another way. Uh, and that's yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's a good point. Uh, Annalie. Yeah. Um, yeah, the committee did work to not include or decide not to include adding additional regulations for ADUs. ADUs are regulated by many other towns in fairly comprehensive zoning bylaws. Um, the other piece being, uh, it's really up to the building inspector to know what um uh, ADUs have been um granted uh, you know permits or granted I don't know approval to be built already um there apparently may are potentially some ADUs that were 
built without permits and that's up to the building inspector to manage mm -hmm. not really for us to manage i believe in this yeah i don't think we can decide how he's going to deal with people that are out of compliance <laughs> that might mm, yeah but denise I was going to say the only way people are going to know is if neighbors report them, because how do you know what you don't know? You know, Bob isn't just going to automatically know, oh, my God, there are illegal ones. And I'm sure there are. And, you know, the problem about illegal ones is that it's there's it's a huge liability on the homeowner's part. So, you know, sometimes it's too late when you find out when there's been a fire or something. And so, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, one thing that I've been thinking about, I really want to see this passed largely because I think Deerfield has an age in place community and this makes it possible to have intergenerational housing and people to stay longer. Um, and in fact, if you look statistically, that is the typical use of an ADU, right? It's to be a caregiving space and that's not to say i'm also in support of it for other reasons but just getting back to what denise was saying i think i don't know where people's fear comes from and why it's even a fear or whatever but i just think that maybe having some hard data to kind of back up the what it isn't versus what it is would make sense um, and that one of the things we're trying to do is preserve people's ability to stay in deerfield or come live here, right? It's both. Um, and for younger people to be able to afford home ownership, like this just, there's not very many silver bullets out there when it comes to housing, but this is one that actually does address a lot of concerns. Mm -hmm. The way it is now, Emily, it actually covers caregivers. That's the thing. It's when the caregiver, when the situation changes, that's when that's when we have these non-compliant um, ADUs, and that's why we thought this was a great way because there are going to be ADUs out there, and our, this regulation is not very complicated. I can think of two right off the top of my head that I'm sure could be um, compliant and permitted, and that's the idea. So that not to make that you know, and then put those on our rolls as um, as units of rental units mm -hmm. which is something that's going to help us move toward a m more equitable housing situation totally just uh so if more people do it that's great but what we're partially doing is allowing Different people who have them already mm -hmm. makes sense i have a question yeah so, so one of the one of the things that came up was parking and where are people going to park and you know right. some of our streets are narrow so when I look at the principal use and the minimal minimum number of parking spaces, the first one says two spaces per dwelling unit for single family. And then the last one says three spaces for single family with accessory apartment. Right. So 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 the semantics here, like with the definition of dwelling unit for a single family versus the accessory apartment is what's the difference? So, I mean, if you're talking about a, a single family, that's all it is, right? So if you add, a single family. I see. So if you add an ADU, you have to add one parking space. And the reason we didn't make it more than that is because it's kind of onerous to ask, especially in the central village, you know, who, where are they going to come up with a space for more? So you can't do street parking. That's not okay. But you have to put that car if you have a fourth car somewhere on your property, I don't care if it's on your front lawn, but you can't put it on the street. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think a lot of people now, they park in their driveway, two cars, one behind the other. I know people that do that and you gotta move a car to get the other one out and that's just the way it is. But we're trying to make it as accessible as possible sure. and have least onerous on people so they can get this done. Which is why we came up with three, because we needed more than two, but we didn't want to, you know, go. Guess, that far. makes perfectly good sense. I think my question, I think my question goes back to the two spaces per dwelling unit for a single family. Is that something that's a requirement through the town? Like that's, that's in the language. Um, and so we're actually striking that completely anyway, because there is no change made there. So sure. we're 
just in this bylaw, we're actually, I'm taking that, as I had said earlier, Annalie and I talked today, and we was like, we're not changing that. So we're just adding that last sentence. Sure. And so in the bylaw that we present to the town, those two first two sentences about parking aren't going to be in the bylaw. Okay. Okay, good. Leave. What did you Let want? Me oh, just wondering, Kathy, if it makes it more sense for when it says three spaces for single family dwelling unit. Is that clearer for you or not necessarily? No. Okay. No. I, I think that um, the three spaces for a single family with an accessory apartment, I mean, that, I, I suppose people can break that up as they care to, but it, it's the bottom line is it's going to need to be three spaces. <laughs> for that single family with an accessory apartment. That's, yeah. if I think if you start adding language or taking language away, then it becomes, like it was confusing me. So I, I think that that's perfect. Like that says what you need to do pretty clearly. That's great. In fact, you know, if you ask me what is written there under dwellings, the first line, two spaces per dwelling unit for a single family to me makes no sense, but I didn't write it, so. Well, I was thinking, do I say something? But it was, I was just having a hard time with that. But I think, yes, if those first two are out and it says three spaces for a single family with an accessory apartment, that's really all you need to know. It's, yeah. it's uncomplicated I, and it can't be on the street. I think if, I suppose if maybe you're going to add something, it might be that is not street parking. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that's fine. I, I think by and large, people don't want to park on the street, quite frankly. Yeah, and they're um, not going to be able to because they're going to get towed. I mean, if it's in the central district anyway, because sure. that was one of my consults with Chief Patorik. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, what's it's because you can't park after a certain time of. Well, I think he doesn't want any encouragement of street parking that let's put it that way because of obvious reasons in, in winter, right? So. I mean, wow. even like, um, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but like Mountain Road, Cross Street, right? Um, these small streets, if you're parking on the road, you're not going to get an emergency vehicle through there. Right. It yeah. would really be a challenge because the streets are pretty narrow. So, yeah. Maybe we could actually add, I, mean, I don't know what people think about this, but just saying, you know, three space, three off street spaces. There you go. Yeah, we could add. I, isn't it already? Isn't that already in the main? That's already in the bylaw. So why add it? It's, it's our, I mean, in the full bylaw, not in our, you know, this one, but in the full bylaw. Meaning it's in the parking bylaw. Is what you're saying? Yeah. So to monkey with it doesn't make any sense if they're. It's already in the full parking park okay. bylaw. You're just reiterating it, and then if somebody changes that down the road, then they change in all these different places. It's. Yeah. I think what we saw with Kurt, Chris was like, it's better to have things kind of consolidated, like in the parking land, see the parking bylaw. Here it is. Note, go back to the parking bylaw. Mm -hmm. Annalie, did you have a question? Well, our, our, yes, our um, bylaw in section 3924H says at least three off street parking spaces. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forget. I mean, there's so much language in here. So I don't even remember it at all. So Emily, are you someone that's good at uh, drawing up PR stuff? Is that, is that something you can help us with? My whole job. My whole job. <laughs> so you're, the, you're the one, you know. Um, yeah, I'm really, I, we, um, forgive me. I don't know like if there's any rules around this, but can Kathy and I meet off outside of this meeting and go through it and yeah. Do that, or in our, in Kathy, are you the right person for me to connect with? Rachel and myself. Now, can the the three of us meet? You know, yes, it's not a quorum. It's not um, a quorum. So we're just doing a task, <laughs> really not talking about future decisions. Right? Correct. Yeah, I'd be happy. That'd be More great. than happy, I'd be delighted to Thank help you. in that way. Maybe that would be something. Well, when are we? talking about, well, we have to get it through the lawyer. So I don't know when the public meeting will be. I think also, you know, the, the inverse of having the accessory apartment to be able to allow a person who's aging to stay in their home is great. It's, uh, it's, you know, status quo, but there's also the opportunity for a parent to allow their their grown children to work while they're home with their young 
children, right? Their grandchildren to be able to support that type of um, family living in our community, right? So there's a, there's a, I find it strange. We even have to try to like market and sell this, but, they're, they're, but it's, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's a win-win, right? Um, that said, you know, um, yeah, uh, uh, I, I'm clearly uh, in favor of this. It was, it was, it was how uh, my mother was able to maintain our house when we were growing up in Northampton, and um, it made a big difference. And I think for other people, um, it will, it will equally do the same thing. It's a, it's really a, a positive, supportive move, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, Denise. Just one last thing. Does it make sense to have the public hearing closer to town meeting instead of doing it too far away because people will forget? I mean, still, I don't know. Bill has to go through the attorney. Who knows how well, long? Yeah, after it goes through the attorney and then the public hearing. I mean, I would think it would be better to have it closer. I don't know if that makes a difference. I guess I would leave that to Anna Lee because who knows what's yeah. down the pike that we're going to have to deal with before town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that famous town meeting when we had half the town meeting agenda. I'll never want to do that again. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, we're sending it to Lisa. Hopefully, she can get it back to us by our July, our January meeting. She may not be able to. That's really just three weeks from now. Um, so uh, hopefully, she can get it back to us by January. Then we have to. She will mo most likely have some suggestions, which we will have to discuss, and then, then we would vote on a town meeting on a public meeting. Yeah, so it's probably not going to be till March anyway. I bet town meetings in April. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I mean, we better get on the ball, I guess. <laughs> feeling the pressure already. So um, yeah, so maybe Emily, after the holidays, we can just set up a PR meeting. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so All much. Right. Rachel, Kathy, and everyone, thank you for moving forward with this. It's. Uh, I just want to put it out there that this was something that was dear to Paul Alice. Um, and so that's kind of a sweet, he and I had talked, worked on this a bit. So yeah. nice nod to Paul Alice. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Historical moments. Okay. A few updates. Um, we had them didn't they don't need to be i don't think uh on the agenda every time but um sometimes it's nice to make sure that we've got them as a public uh, acknowledgement a public recognition of some of the behind the scenes stuff that's going on so first of all um i am talking with peggy sloan at FERCOG. she is drafting a, a contract for us to do the chapter 179 zoning board um bylaws uh, there's a question as to whether or not that can be split into two parts, one just a technical review for format, consistencies, inconsistencies, and then the second part would be a substantive review for um, issues that are problematic with some of our bylaws potentially in contrast to Massachusetts laws or whatever. So um, I think from a money standpoint and from a timing standpoint, we're gonna go for the technical review first, but we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Ken Comia uh, just actually today sent some updates. Um, he is working both on uh, boilerplate decisions with conditions and um, reviewing our applications. Uh, this is cool, The um, our standard conditions he did. Oh, Andrew, did you have something? Well, in the, Many pages that came after, you know, with the um, tonight, tonight's materials, the regulations and um, governing fees that I had worked on, it's not the most recent copy. Correct. Yes. Okay. I mean, yeah. So those will have to be updated. We're still a meeting. Um, yeah, that actually wasn't on our updates, but the fee schedule. Um, actually, I, I'm sorry, I, I can pipe in. I can tell you why that's not the most recent, because the most recent is not actually official until the clerk has it sends it and has it uploaded and that's why i've i've left them i i had changed them and i put them back so we can change we can check with um the clerk after actually tomorrow's meeting uh, tomorrow's vote uh but when she's planning on sending she has a number of things she needs to send into the attorney general and that will include our fee schedule okay um, good i just 
wanted to make sure that wasn't um, forgotten. So um, with the standard conditions, uh, Ken did uh, send us actually 22 conditions to consider. Um, he did feel that the, the decisions we're currently crafting are great, although I think what he's been looking at was primarily the, um, uh, the last one, which uh, Lisa was involved with <laughs> for drafting. So <laughs> that kind of was a little bit cheating on our part. Um, our, the next point, I think, as far as I'm concerned, is that those, and is, they're just um, suggested conditions that might be a checklist that we'd look at when we're um, uh, writing up a decision or, or, you know, making a decision on a, on some app, a site plan review application and potentially for, for also um, for, for special permits, for stormwater, for subdivisions. Um, so I'm going to check with Casey. I think the next step then would be that Lisa probably needs to review the standard conditions and make sure that that makes sense because she usually does anyway. So that's what's happening with the, um, the conditions. Um, in terms of applications, Ken has uh, sent back and has actually worked some uh, within staff as well as um, looking at our current application site plan review um, application. He felt it also was in great shape and felt that the information that we ask is consistent with um, site plan review applications in other towns. And so I have asked Amy and Bob to take a look at, he did have some uh, relatively minor changes and suggestions. And there also, I think there are some changes in terms of our process and whatnot that I believe it would be Amy and Bob that would look at. And so we're checking with them. And so probably, hopefully they'll get back to us um, within the next meeting or so. Um, same with a and application. Um, uh, he did make some additions of some questions. This is cool. You know, a, a and R application or approval not required. You want to make sure that they that we're the ones who are deciding whether or not the approval is not not required, rather than the applicant. And so there would be some specific questions that the application would be asking, so that that um, determination can be made. And also asking um, Amy and Bob to take a peek at that. Thank you, Amy. Um, otherwise, we do have a few more applications, but I've asked him to kind of put a hold on that until we can get through these and get them settled and then potentially look at our uh, special permit, stormwater, subdivision applications. We'll hold on that until we can get these taken care of. Are there any other questions with those? Okay, so hopefully we'll have something on one of those at the next meeting. Um, Master plan, we still haven't heard anything about the DLTA grant um, deadline. So we we did put in our request to the uh, to the select board to please put us high on the list for requesting DLT grant funding. Um, and uh, probably going to be a quick turnaround when those, that DLT grant application is uh, process is submitted. Um, for the planner, um, <clears throat> I've been updating some information from this time, practically this time last year. Casey in particular has been asking, this is in, in, in hopes of requesting through the budget cycle for 2023 um, that we could have a, our own hopefully full-time hired planner. Um, Casey had requested that we get some job descriptions, salary ranges, you know, what are the results for, for, for planners when they're writing grants and what are, and might there be some job sharing possibilities? It actually turns out that Hatfield might be interested in sharing a position. There's certainly pros and cons to sharing a position, but it could be a step in the right direction. So um, I'm, I'm again talking with Casey um, and also talk with the select board and really probably primarily making the um, case that number one, what do they want help with? What do they need help with? Because the planner, from what I understand within so many of these other towns, they really work also to move forward things on a, from the select board and from the town administrator. But also, I mean, a statement or a recognition that volunteers can only do so much. And if they if we really want some significant progress and significant progress in a timely manner, especially to 
help support some of the things that are going on with our campus and whatnot, um, then we probably need some additional. Hope the next people are working for us. Um, moving on here, I think this is the last one. Roles, responsibilities. Um, uh, um, every year, well, that's, I think that was it for the updates, wasn't it? Let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah, cool. Any other, anything else with the updates? No. Okay. New business. Um, usually, uh, for many of you, I'm sure in your places of work, you have annual policy review, annual review of management practices. And so um, we don't have a lot of those here at the planning board. We have a few. One is our roles and responsibilities. Um, and um, the, the one that we have sort of drafted in place with, you know, what's the role of the planning board? What are the roles of our officers and of the planning board members and staff and whatnot? Um, since uh, that draft, we've had hires in town in town hall um, and job descriptions have changed. So I'm checking with Casey specifically about the um, specific expectations we can have for the assistant town administrator as well as as Amy. Um, right now, I think the assistant town administrator's um, involvement with the planning board has been pared back significantly from what it was um, when Jen was here. So um, I want to make sure that we know, you know, that everyone knows really what we're, what we're, um, what we're, what we can count on. Um, the other piece being that certainly was at our, our meeting before the last town meeting, there was that question about how can we fulfill our charges, some of which are in town bylaws as well as state requirements that we review municipal um, municipal projects. Um, and so I've, I've reached out to a few folks to help us understand how can we fulfill that responsibility if in fact we don't have the preliminary data and information. Um, so I don't have anything really to report back to on that, but that still is something to ponder. <laughs> a question, I'm just blabbering on here. Any questions with that? <laughs> I think that was it with the rules and responsibilities. So hopefully by our next by our next meeting, we'll um, I will have some of those answers and we can finalize that at our next meeting. Okay. All righty. Um, code of conduct, different code of conduct also. Um, I think it, it's sort of it's actually not stated in the code of conduct, but again, that is a it's a uh, an annual pol it's a policy that the select board did approve actually over a year ago and so as you may recall a week or so ago I sent out to all of you um, the code of conduct with there's a little signature page and um, apparently we all have a file in the uh, town clerk's office and so your updated signature will go in the total code in, in your file Rachel, it looked like you had a wow. And, uh, oh, she yeah. said, I didn't do it. That was her. I didn't do it. <laughs> I, I was like, well, I had this thing in my head. I was like, there's some form on my computer that I'm supposed to fill out. And I don't know what it is. And I kept scrolling through. Now I remember okay. it. So that's good. I just wrote it down. Thank you. Okay. I, I, and is it, where is it? Because uh, I, I don't remember seeing uh, it. I can, I can resend it. It's I from Annalie. Yeah, it was just from me. It was an email. I, I have a number of things from Anna. Big aha moment there. Sorry. I had all these things like, I, anyway. Just a few. Denise? Finally, I, when did you send that? <laughs> I, I probably did it already, but don't remember. Well, yeah. So uh, Two weeks ago or so. I mean, you'd have to send it and you wouldn't send it back to me. It goes to the time. I hall. probably didn't. Yeah. Could you resend it then? Sure. That, Kathy didn't remind me. <laughs> okay, I will resend to everyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Emily, I don't need it because I did mine. Oh, um, Emily. You are okay. conducting conducting yourself just beautifully. The one who works full time and has a small child. That's okay. We're good. Well, it's because I work full time and have, it's like, oh, I can just do this. On my right. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It was. 
was November 27th she sent it, I think. November 27th. I was <laughs> okay. No form shaming here, okay? Okay. No, 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 no. Well, it'll help you look for it. November 27th. I'm sure you've got it. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, do, I'll do remember that too. Um, um, so the select board uh, in at the beginning of November, this is another uh, item under new business, the select board at the beginning of November did um, pass after quite a bit of discussion and work with the community, an anti-hate statement. And the select board was really very strong with saying that they wanted to um, post it in the town, town hall, um, make it easily accessible for um, public members of the public and for people to under, to know that that's something that, that they espouse and want to make sure that everyone knows about. And so um, I think a question of periodically, maybe not at all of our meetings, but periodically that it could be good for us to actually read it just like we read our, um, our uh, meeting guidelines at the beginning, because certainly, I mean, anti-hate statement is a fairly strong statement, but um, wanting to be open to all peoples is an important goal for the planning board. So um, are you, I don't know if you want me to read it now? Oh. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I think what we would say is that the, the planning board um, agrees with the, Deerfield Select Board, which unequivocally condemns racism, discrimination, and hate in all its forms. And we commit to work diligently to ensure that our town is welcoming and safe for everyone. As elected leaders, we recognize our responsibility to understand and address all racial inequality. We will encourage diversity of voices and representation on Deerfield Town Boards and Committees. As select might have to tweak this a little bit. As select board members, planning board members, we pledge to strive each day to help foster a community where all individuals can live happily, free of fear, and with equal access to opportunities, regardless of, re of race, religion, ethnic background, national origin, ability, gender identity, or sexual orientation. What might be that we would just say that we that this is the select board statement and we also concur. Yeah, concur. concur. That's a good word, concur. <laughs> Sound okay? I don't think we need to vote on that, but I don't want to get maybe what we would do is read it whenever we have a public hearing. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We could vote on concurring. Okay, yeah, let's. I think that's good. So, Andrea, you move that we concur? I do so move. I do so second that we concur. Major Blaine. All right, Major any Blaine. further discussion? Yes. Okay, Kathy Sylvester? Uh, Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason? I do so agree. <laughs> Rachel Blaine? Ra Rachel Blaine, yes. Uh, Emily Gaylord? Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Liebson? Andrew Leapson, yes. Kathy Retroba. Kathy Retroba, yes. Emily Wilson, yes. So unanimously concurred. <laughs> Approved. Thank you. Oh, appointment, community preservation committee. Oh, my goodness. Well, in fact, thank you to um, considering. I know that a number of you have considered uh, appointment to the community preservation committee. I had a few conversations individually with people and um Kathy Sylvester I think that this is something that you have um I agree to do it yeah. agree to to take on if that's comfortable uh, as, or, or unless anybody else right here tonight wants to fight her for it <laughs> okay thank you very much Kathy why don't I think this is an official appointment so um could we have a motion to appoint Kathy Sylvester to the Community Preservation Committee. I move that we appoint Kathy Sylvester to the Community Preservation Committee. I second that, Denise Mason. All right, any discussion? <clears throat> okay, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. <laughs> Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. 
Emily Gaylord. <laughs> Emily Gaylord, yes. Uh, Andrew Lipson. Andrew Lipson, yes. Uh, and Kathy Wotroba. Kathy Wotroba, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kathy. And thank you for the, every, uh, the other folks who did consider it because it was important. I don't believe there's any other business not anticipated 48 hours. Unfortunately, I think the, um, the condo thing should have been under here, but it's okay. Um, we took care of it. Um, no other business, I don't think. Um, public comments, I don't believe. Eight. Nope, it doesn't look like uh, there's any public here to make any comments. Um, are there any reports from committees or seminars? Ah, Denise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, the first thing when you were talking about, oh, about getting a plan, you were talking about uh, different job descriptions. We haven't submitted it yet, but we will be submitting. I've worked working with Casey and the grant writer to submit a grant to do an assessment of town administration to really understand what's needed. Is it, yeah. So, you know, and just currently the, um, when Barb, what was it Barb Hancock? When she left, the attorney general just did approve the separation of her job, so. So, you know, I don't know what's happening with that. The unfortunate part is that you can't advertise until the attorney general separates that, which I think is so ridiculous. So I'm assuming they're advertising now for a treasurer, but, um, but at any rate, so that's that. So we'll be doing that. And then we did just receive under um, Connected Community Initiative, we did receive a $75,000 grant for efficiency and regional regionalization and to do a transitional senior center at the church. Um, that's the plan at this point, you know, it's moving target. And we're also in the process of submitting another $50,000 grant. Thank you, Andrea, for bringing that up. Um, uh, again, for the church, and that would be for church renovation. And unfortunately, we did not get a community one-stop grant for the 1888 building. That would have been 400,000, but we're gonna have um, a meeting with, I don't know, the powers that be next week to say, why the heck didn't we get it? <laughs> you know, and how can we reapply? So, so that's really what's going on with that. So I think maybe Rachel and Andrea might have some questions, Rachel. I just have a quick, uh, the 75,000, that's a state grant? It is, and yes. What, under what ages? Agents? It's, oh God, it's under community compact and it's efficiency regionalization. Oh, and one last thing, sorry. Um, a federal grant, which I was really wasn't involved, you know, that involved with, Tim was more involved with. Um, it is for a geothermal exchange for the whole town campus. And I think we're gonna hear about that in January, which is a really quick turnaround. So we'll keep you posted on that, which, which would be really cool because that would affect the library, the 1888 building, the church, I mean, everything. So it could reduce expenses with all of those buildings. Mm -hmm. So, and with the buildings, you know, we'd be doing all new HVAC, you know, really energy efficient systems. Which is all yeah, kind of work with CCI. We really appreciate it, Kathy. The 1888 building is that the senior center? That it. That's a former senior center. Yeah, it was just determined to call it 1888. It, it, you know, the senior center only took up such a tiny part of that building. It was right. That's the that's the kind of misnomer there. It's not really a senior center. It's just the senior center was planted. Right. Right. Basically, and, one little part of the building, yeah. and that'll be turned into the um you know town hall the mun municipal building that's that's the plan and they've uh, their plans right now there's a um, preliminary draft for that plan and you know where the offices will be what offices so so that's going on nice good good were there other questions i saw various hands now uh, no i i was just gonna say i believe that the um the separation of the job that um, Carlene has has been approved, but I, I that was 
maybe a little bit of hearsay. I, she mentioned that at the at the election, um, the day of the election. So I, do, I don't have anything specific. It was. Yes. yes, it was. Yeah, good. All righty. Um, any other reports? Oh, Emily? Yeah, I just had a comment. Um, I just wanted to applaud the whole campus idea. I've been like doing my homework and reading a lot of the master plan. And I just can't think of something that better aligns with the climate goals and the street goals and the building use goals and the preservation goals. It's really cool. So and to see something like geothermal tackled in old buildings is actually like a pretty cutting edge way of looking at renewable technology. So I just think it's so it's gonna say rad, but maybe I should use a better word. Hey, rad. You feel <laughs> it was one of the considerations when the library um was first applying for the grant, one of the things that they had to do was look at other properties. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily a foregone conclusion that they would stay at that place. Mm. And um, there are certainly where other are other properties that are available in town that town owned properties. And that was one of the that was one of the reasons to renovate as opposed to rebuild somewhere else. It's because it was so logically connected to the elementary school and yeah. There's, a, there's a, a house on my street that's being renovated and um, they're using geothermal, but they're using geothermal because they weren't allowed because of the gas moratorium to, to mm -hmm. connect to the, the gas line. So, I mean, fortunately, we're in a day of age where there's an alternative and actually a better alternative, right, um, as it relates to our planet. Um, an undertaking, but I think it will be quite amazing when it's done. That's interesting. That's, That's interesting. what happened with us at Eagle Brook. Huh? Yeah. We we had we put in the lines all the way up the hill, and mm -hmm. then we got this. Oh, that's a huge. And thing. so we moved to geothermal. Wow. Wow. Hmm. wow. Okay. Other um, committee seminars, uh, Andrea. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that the public forum for the open space um, committee is going to be on the 13th, which is a week from tomorrow. And um, it's at 630 and it's going to be led by, oh, I've just lost her name. Um, the woman from FERCOG who, Allison Gage. Um, and so I, um, I would encourage you all to tune in. It should be listed on the town website it was originally going to be tomorrow night but can't do anything on an election night um mm. on an election day no other committee meetings can happen so it's now happening on the 13th at 6 30 all zoom what's the topic the open space plan that big thing that um i think i sent um the action plan to select board and I sent it to CCI. I sent it to uh, Casey. This, uh, we sent it to a lot of people. Um, it's a big honking report, but the action plan is a little, a little shorter. Well, I'll do a little, a little PS to that. Um, the action plan, in fact, does have of two or three areas that um, need planning board action. And similarly, in the Healthy Soils report, there are two or three areas that need planning board action. So potentially in February or March, um, the chairs of those respective committees, Alan Swedland for uh, Open Space and Chris Curtis for the MVP Healthy Soils, are going to come to the planning board to speak specifically of the areas where we need to have action. And that goes back yet, how, you know, how do we get some help to do what they're asking us to do? So, yes, Denise? I was just gonna say that's unfortunate. Unfortunate so many things going on because now 6.30 the same night, there is a public meeting DOT Zoom on the Stillwater Bridge. And mm -hmm. I am going to be on that one <laughs> because I don't want what's happening to what happened in Sunderland to happen to this one. You know, and I don't know because it's not a state bridge. We've got to be very careful because we're getting money. And you know, I spoke with Carolyn and Carolyn said we, we've got to be nice because if we're mean, they could take the money away from us. <clears throat> but um, I know, but I don't want a bright blue railing. They're not going to put any lights, <clears throat> but at any rate, so just to let you know 
we don't have a Zoom link yet, but that's that all is happening. So Andrew, will this be, will there be a recording of the open space? I presume all, all the. Okay, so then that will be on, on you know, YouTube I, afterwards. That could be a question for Amy. Amy, isn't that gonna be recorded? Excuse me? The, uh, the, the open space forum, which is a public hearing, public hearing or public presentation, which happens the 13th, that will be recorded, right? And it's already I, been- I couldn't say, I don't have anything to do with that committee. So um, that would be a question for probably Chris. I, I mean, I would assume it's recorded since most things are, but- Okay, so have you, do you've got no you're, you're not you're right. shaking your head. Is it not? Could Andrea, can you check with Chris because I would never assume Which anything. Chris? Which Chris? Yeah. Which the Chris? assistant town administrator, new guy. He okay. replaced Jen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If it's not a public meeting, too, public hearing. It's not a public oh, hearing. It is. Hearing. It is. Oh, then it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, that would be good because I can watch it later. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Fun. Um, other reports? I did see today that the um, senior, oh, are they still called the senior center? They are, um, are asking for volunteers to help distribute meals to seniors who can't get out on Christmas. Um, and um, I don't know, I, I did that in my, my distant past and it was a really meaningful thing to do, maybe between dinner and dessert. Um, so uh, you would contact Jennifer Romillard or the Deerfield Senior Center if you can um, either help with bagging up meals or delivering them to um, any of the towns. And you know, you could take an hour or take a day, however you'd like like to do it. I think that's a, a good, th good thing to do. Also, I'll also mention, this is our last meeting of 2022. Ta da so uh, thank you all. Thanks, thanks to everyone. We our attendance is absolutely remarkable. Um, sharing the burdens. I mean that has certainly been e evident tonight, and um, lots of thoughtfulness and attention to all the issues, um, and lots that goes on be between these meetings. So good group. Thank you. Yeah. Move for twenty twenty three. Here we come. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Right. Only though, if we can get a motion to adjourn. Oh, I mo move that we adjourn. All <laughs> right. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Do we get anything from Amber, Amber Gardens? No, we didn't. Um, and okay. Okay. Amy, if you can make sure you ask for them yeah. to group a report at our next, um, our January meeting, that would be helpful. Thank you. Hold on. Didn't we get something from Amber Gardens? Well, October, but we haven't, I don't think we have. Not November. Not November or December. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Okay, and I, I'm really sorry to do this too. Do we want to say anything about our site visit to Vesh? We no. have. We had it. We had it. <laughs> thank you for those of you who could come. Yes, thank you. Um, well, in relation to that, though, I guess it's well, it's not quite a report, but um, uh, the peer review. Um, process is moving forward. I think a selection has been made and, um, you know, fingers crossed. I will see whether or not we can actually have a report um, at our next meeting. That would be really clear if we could. All righty. Okay, now I move that we adjourn. Yeah. Second, Denise. Second, all right. And uh, everyone roll call vote. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Yes. 814 a April. record a record it is a record <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'll be> <laughs>